Hi, I'm Juan Pedro Tomás. I'm the editor with RCR Wireless News. And today we are visiting Huawei's campus in China, where the company has large training and research facilities, and where Huawei is also showcasing its latest developments in different areas, including industrial 5G. Mobile operators in China have been deploying uh, massively 5G over the last four years, but there's still a lot of room for 5G to grow, mainly in other regions. So what do you think that uh, the industry is already talking about the transition from 5G to 5.5G? When I think about um, what we first tried to do with 5G, um, it was very clear, you know, the speed, the latency, massive connections, and that, of course, supports the telecom operator as um, efficiency and therefore they lower their operating costs so hopefully they become more efficient. Mm -hmm. But then of course when we developed the 5G standard, we always had industry and efficiency together with energy as at, at the forefront here. Yeah? So when you ask why the transition to 5.5G, we realized as we were starting the deployment in 5G into industry, and then also we saw the user behavior change during, um, during the pandemic. You know, mm -hmm. you're sitting at home, I'm at home, so we do healthcare at home, we do education at home, we're doing business at yeah. home. So this is all uplink driven. 5G does a much better job at this uplink and video than 4G. And 5.5G, one of the key things we designed in the standards was improved uplink. And that will support video predominantly for industry and consumer in a much better way than traditional 5G. RCR Wireless News also visited Huawei's headquarters in Shenzhen, where we interviewed Brian Chamberlain, Executive Advisor for Huawei's Career Marketing Division, who provided further details regarding the next steps in the transition from current 5G to future 5.5G technologies. During the interview, Chamberlain highlighted the fact that future 5.5G networks will enable higher uplink speeds, which will pave the way for industries to improve efficiencies through existing and new use cases. 5.5G is driven by 3GPP, mm -hmm. okay, so there is a standard body working uh, to define what 5.5G will be uh, and what kind of features it will include. That standard body has not finalized mm -hmm. their decisions yet. Um, Huawei is of course working closely with them and the direction that we see it going in um, is focus less on the consumers. From the consumer side, it's just going to be, again, more and more download speeds. But on the business side, we're seeing a change uh, to support higher and higher uplink speeds. Okay. Um, one of the big differences between the consumer network and networks for businesses uh, is the difference between downloading versus uploading. As a consumer, we're downloading, we're watching lots of videos, uh, but very few people are producing the videos. In business, it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. You've got lots and lots of cameras around your factories, uh, your warehouses that are uploading lots of data, but very few that are downloading the data. Um, so in industry networks, that whole um, upload-download ratio has to be flipped around. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what's causing some challenges with the current 5G specification. And so 5.5G is gonna help correct that and support uplink speeds of up to one gigabit. During this trip to China, we also had the opportunity to attend Mobile World Congress in Shanghai, where vendors, operators and other industry stakeholders gathered to discuss the latest developments in the telecom industry. At Huawei booth, executives explained the company's latest technology developments in different areas such as 5G, future 5.5G networks, AI, IoT and cloud. Huawei also showcases how 5G technology is already enabling companies operating in different verticals such as ports, mining and manufacturing to improve operational efficiencies while reducing costs and offering a more safe environment for workers. When we start to deliver some solutions to industry, we find a lot of it is uplink, video uplink, yes? In the consumer, video uplink because of behavior change and industry, mostly video, surveillance video, cameras inside factories trying to uplink the video quality. So there's a few key things in the 5.5G, and the first one you can see here is all about standardization. So yeah. the standards were, will be frozen, and that means the ecosystem can, 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 uh, can launch, okay? So at the moment it's mostly pilots with some commercial uh, pre-commercial things, yes? The other good thing is we've already demonstrated all the technologies in an ecosystem. So we've demonstrated, for example, how we can do a lot of IoT solutions and package them into this 5.5G standard because 
there's going to be millions of connections and we want to demonstrate that IoT is part of 5G, 5.5G standardization. In order to increase the penetration of private 5G networks in businesses, Huawei believes that the telecom industry should focus on showing the key benefits of 5G compared to other technologies implemented by enterprises, such as Wi-Fi. Huawei believes that the key concepts to be taken into account in these discussions are not speed and latency, but reliability. But when you walk into a business and you try to sell them on the benefits of 5G, you can't sell them on higher speeds and low latency because the business is not comparing 4G to 5G. They're comparing Wi-Fi to 5G. And the business benefits of 5G versus Wi-Fi is not speed and latency, it's reliability. And so if we want to see more 5G deployments into the industry, we have to, as an industry, learn to talk about the real benefits of 5G compared to Wi-Fi. But we're trying to show the opportunity, okay? We're trying to show the vision. We're trying to demonstrate that it can be done with the right regulatory policy, the right talent, yes? The right investment models, yeah? Educating the telecom uh, sector, the telecom operators, that there is more business to be done other than just selling SIM cards. But they have to understand that they are a platform for this transformation of education, healthcare, um, you know, manufacturing and all of these sorts of things. So whether it's public network, private network, one of the key components is collaboration. It's not Huawei, okay? There's a challenge in a hospital. We don't know anything about health, we didn't know four or five years ago, but we bring in other partners, yes? And prior to the challenges we have globally, the, the geopolitical, we're working with partners across the world, yes? You have expertise in, in the so application software or the knowledge in how to write the AI algorithm. Huawei came in, could build the network together with other vendors for a telecom operator, and we can deploy and you can cook this soup, right? To make a good, a, a good meal. Um, so this collaboration is terribly important.